Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Hive 2 and let's make a nice pad today. So let's right click, go to init preset and we're gonna be using the wavetable. So where it says sawtooth, click this here and go down to wavetable and you'll see wavetable activated up here. Go ahead and click this and then click to browse. And then one of my favorites for a sound that we're gonna be going for here is under complex and then it's gonna be disco dance. So we have that selected, let's take a listen to it. Isn't it moving because we're not using anything to modulate it with. So here in the hexagon, we could go one shot or we can go looping and we can change the tempo here, which is definitely a cool feature. However, for this patch, I'm going to leave this off and use an LFO for this. So on the LFO, let's grab this target here and drag it to the position and then increase this dot all the way to the top. Now that's way too fast, right? So where it says one over 16, let's click this and go to maybe one second and then bring the rate down quite substantially and check that out. So here we're kind of not really hearing any modulation. And that's for two things. One, the modulation is very slow, which is a good thing. That's what we want. The other reason is that this LFO is currently bipolar, right? It's going up and down, so positive and negative. And we're kind of just using this modulation on a positive basis. So we need to change this from bipolar to unipolar via this plus right here. So now we're getting kind of uh, some movement here. And let's change this gate to sync. So if it's on gate, our LFO is gonna be restarting every single time and we kind of don't really want that. The LFO should just kind of be moving the wavetable just kind of how it wants to. Okay, so this is cool. Let's add a little bit of unison, maybe like three or four voices. And give a little detune. And then let's drop our cutoff down. And now we need some modulation envelope here, so let's increase this a little to the right. Now the envelope is gonna be wrong on both the amp and the mod, so let's bring our amp to maybe like 70, 78, something like that, and same thing for our mod envelope. We have something like that. Now when we let go, it's a little bit too abrupt as it cuts off. So we need to increase our release pretty substantially as well. And then maybe our decay kind of on both of these and drop our sustains down, something like that. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so now we're kind of getting somewhere here. So. What I like to do after this, I do like that pad sound, but I kind of always like having this almost like a lead sound, just kind of moving around through the stereo field and kind of doing something interesting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the second oscillator here and we can select this to route this to the first filter. And we can bring our main pad down just a little bit for now. So we have the sawtooth, so maybe what we can do is Let's modulate this and kind of have it moving out through different notes. So here in the matrix A where it says none, this big bar, let's grab this here and drop this on the pitch. So we have oscillator to tune and I guess turn the depth pretty substantially high. And then we're gonna be using LFO2 to modulate this, right? So we can select this here and we can go to LFO2. Or we can alternately go to LFO2 down here. We could do that as well, but it really depends on how you, uh, how you do it. So, We can tell that this is modulating the pitch, right? But it's not exactly what we want. So it's a little slow. So maybe go one over four. That's the kind of speed I would like. So for this, what we could do is quantize the notes that it hits. And that's what's cool about Hive. So here in the modulation matrix where it says Q, let's go ahead and select this here. And there's quite a few different choices to pick from. So if you want something to just modulate between a major scale, minor series, minor chord, there's all these options to do this here with. So for now, let's just try octaves and see how that sounds. So you're gonna hear that subtlety in the back, background over there. So maybe we can even just bring this up one octave. And we can even try some other things just to kind of check it out here. We can go for a minor scale. 
Now, what I personally go for for this patch here, or we can go to a minor chord. And since this is kind of a triangle, and I don't really want that constant shape. We can select this here and then maybe go to a random. Now, this is cool, but we always do have to keep in mind what notes that we're pressing here, because if we play a certain chord, that's going to modulate that chord in a minor series. So it's easy to get very dissonant with that. So generally, if you want something kind of simplistic to stick with, you can either go to octaves or fifths. So for this, like I said, I'm going to go for octaves. And alternatively, what you can do as well, if you don't want this kind of sound here for the for this modulation, you can always send this to the other filter so we can deselect it from the filter one and then go to the filter two and then select this oscillator two by going to oscillator two and now it's gonna be in this filter. So it's very fast and kind of abrupt here. And that's because we, have, we haven't really changed our amp two or our mod, but I do want you to know that that option is there. So for this patch, I'm just gonna keep this over here. And I'm gonna bring the volume down of this oscillator here as well. Kind of mix these two to taste. But wait, there's more. Remember in the last video where we're doing the alternate or we can go for the random. So random's really cool because every single note that you hit, it's gonna give you a random value. And it's nice to put this randomness on the pan and then kind of give it a good amount of depth. So every time that the note is going to get struck, then it's gonna be basically in a different spot. We can hear on the right side there. So if that's a little hard to hear, let's take it out of this filter here and go to the second one here. So when I'm hitting these notes, it kind of moves around the stereo field. So you never really know exactly where it's gonna be. So let's put this back here and kind of keep working on this patch here. too fast, we can always change it here, maybe to a half note. Okay, so now we haven't even done effects at all, and it sounds pretty cool at this point. So let's go to our effects and kind of turn some of this on here. I'll grab the EQ, turn it at the top here, turn this on for now, and we'll kind of just address this here in a minute. One thing is a little bit of distortion is nice. It kind of excites thing, I always like to think. Some chorus, but we don't really need that much chorus. A little bit goes a long way, so let's bring our wet down pretty substantially. We can leave this here on classic, increase our depth, drop our rate down a bit. If we want some extra low end, we can always put this sub here in the second uh, or in the first filter, put it in the sub here. And what's cool about Hive as well, if you want the sub to also mimic what the wavetable is doing, we can select from pulse and then we can go to like OSC. So they start getting a little bit muddy. So on the EQ, let's grab the bass here, put this all the way to the left and then drag the left down just a bit here. Then add a two unison for the second oscillator that's doing that pitch modulation. And then one of the last couple things we can do is adding delays because delays kind of really bring out pads, especially with this second melodic uh, oscillator kind of doing its thing. 
And for this, let's turn the width all the way up because we really want to maximize that delays. And it kind of is normal, drag down the low pass and increase the high pass and mix the taste. I should maybe even speed up the envelope just a little bit on the attacks for both of these. And since this is opening up, one of the things I also like to do is increasing this key follow here to kind of open up the filter as we get higher up on the notes. And for this, I'll probably increase the decay on both of these and maybe maybe just increase the sustain just a little bit here. A lot of these have to do with just kind of feeling out the sound, how that works in the track, kind of adjusting your envelopes accordingly. And if you didn't know this, another cool thing as well is under this little triangle here, you can click this and you can save your envelope shape. If you almost feel like you've dialed in the perfect envelope amp for a, for a pluck or for a pad or whatever it is you're making, you can save that as its own individual preset for whatever you see these drop downs, right? You can save stuff for the oscillators or there's presets there as well to check out if you're curious or LFOs. So that's another cool thing that I really like in Hive. So this is just about done. A lot of the other things are kind of just to taste, like I said, the envelope or kind of how much more of these effects here you'd like. The last thing that pads really do need though are is, er, are, is reverb, right? So we can use this in the box, which this reverb does sound really good. I always prefer to use reverb outside of the box so we can select this hive here and then just route it to some Valhalla and kind of see how this sounds. And especially for Valhalla, once we select this here, by default, I have mine as Concert Hall, but for a pad like this, I would maybe want to go with the Dirty Plate, which I believe is a more newer, a more newer, a newer algorithm that they have, and maybe increase the decay just a little bit here. And then for the low cut, that's probably fine. 8K is probably fine as well. And then, um, yeah, maybe we can reduce the pre-delay, maybe 15 milliseconds, something like that. And then if we like that speed of the attack, that's cool. If we want to slow down how the filter opens and all that, we just have to increase this attack here a little bit more. I think I'm gonna call this hauntingly beautiful because I've always wanted to name a patch that I might have done that already. But anyway, that's pretty much the concept here in Hive. And like I said, everything is just right in front of your face. It's easy to use, and it's just it's it's, it's such a good synth. It's good on CPU, and it's really one of my favorites out there. I use this quite often. It's probably one of my most used synthesizers aside from pigments, or maybe I use them about the same, or it really depends on the project, but Rest be sure, rest be sure. I, oh my God, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Anyway, this is how the pad kind of is built. If you want to get a free copy of that, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.